It's a silent but increasingly pressing issue in Hong Kong. Unmentioned and treated mental health issues. On average, 3 in 100 adults in Hong Kong currently live with depression. Most of them suffer in silence. But researchers at the Chinese University of Hong Kong have discovered a high-tech solution that harnesses artificial intelligence to help diagnose problems that often go unsaid. According to Professor Benny C, new AI drive tech can detect depression by simply looking into a person's eyes. How does this work? We have Professor C in the studio to learn more. Hi, Professor C. Nice to meet you. Can you briefly introduce what ARIA is and how it works? Sure. So ARIA is a very simple technology using the retina, just the, uh, uh, the eyeball behind the eyes. Uh, using that part of the eyes, uh, we can actually extract a lot of useful information. So the whole process is just to capture an um, image uh, on the retina on both eyes, and then we upload it to the server. Uh, as long as you have an internet, you can actually use this technology. So after uploading, the whole process uh, is automatically you know, run behind the scene. And then once the uh, process is finished in about uh, two to three minutes, then the result will be sent back to the site, and then we can let the um, uh, individuals know the result immediately. So the whole process would be around five minutes. So how do retinal image allow AI to analyze whether the person has depression? Okay, yes, that's a good question. Uh, uh, we have done a lot of other indications uh, before we do depression. Mm. Actually, we have done stroke, we have done uh, white matter hyper intensity in the MRI images and so on. Uh, one of the reasons why we can use a retinal image to detect so many things is because the retina has three major things. Uh, they have the embryological relationship with the brain and also have an anatomical relationship and pathological relationship. So the retina has a lot of information. Uh, so once we uh, capture the information you know, in the retina using some AI and machine learning method, we can actually extract the relationship between some pathological or, or anatomical characteristics in the retina and relate that to the specific diseases. And the reason we uh, are very keen in doing depression is because we realize that there are so many problems in the current society. So depression is a major problem. And one of the issues is, is the difficulty in terms of assessing an individual with depression at a very early stage so that we can actually do something before it became very serious. So uh, we want to uh, achieve that and the retina provide us with a very objective measure in terms of the, um, uh, the vessels information, the nerve information and the structural information in the retina. So that's the reason why it is useful, I think, uh, and the, the simplicity in application. Instead of doing a lot of work, you know, in the, in the as assessment, we can do it in a very simple uh, fashion. Mm. So what are the differences between ARIA and the current available diagnostic tool for depression? Right, the current tools are mainly based on uh, questionnaire, uh, interview, you have to talk to the um, individuals for, uh, you know, a, a decent amount of time and uh, 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 you can achieve a lot of things at the same time. But in terms of assessment, it's a pretty subjective um, uh, process. And uh, we find out that using the retinal image characteristics, we can provide an objective measures so that when we realize somebody have risk of depression, we can provide a, a risk score for depression. And that you know, deal with a lot of subjectivity in terms of the um, assessment process. And at the same time, the retinal image capturing um, you know, uh, process is very fast, very easy. And it doesn't hurt the eye, it's just a photograph, like you're taking a photograph of your face, but now it's just taking a photograph of your retina using a special equipment. So the, um, uh, the efficiency is very high and you have a very good objectivity. So it would deal, it deal with a lot of problems currently have. In addition, we, have, we can provide a lot of health risk assessment benefit, the side benefit of taking a retinal image, you can provide other things so the individuals feel that they are not wasting the time in the assessment. They can gain some health information uh, from the exercise. So I think it would be a good thing to actually provide in the community. Mm. 
So what studies have you conducted to prove its accuracy and what studies do you have to do more? Uh, actually, we have done a few already. And uh, the first study that we have done in, in the past is in the area of stroke that we, you know, we do a lot of stroke studies. And, uh, and within the stroke study, we have some components of uh, measuring de uh, depression. But we haven't actually paid a lot of attention because those are stroke patients. Everybody knows stroke patients after, uh, at, during rec recovery, um, they have some you know, emotional problem and some adaptation. Uh, and then we, are, we have recently we have done a, a nasopharyngeal carcinoma cancer patients. And of course, they also have some um, you know, high risk of having depression or other things because of the, uh, the figuring of the treatment. Uh, so those are not surprise. But uh, we also done some uh, other normal individual study recently in the population, and we realized that it also works. So that we uh, 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 carry out uh, last year, we carry out a, a study in the Castle Peak Mental Health Hospital. So, and we find out from that study for you know very uh, sure that we can capture because those are more extreme patients. So we now the we know the result is very clear that the retina can tell. Uh, the, the difference between a normal individual from a depressed individual. So what will be the application of this technology in the future and how do you expect ARIA to help people? I think the application is wide. Uh, it depends on how we want to use it. I, I know a lot of insurance company interested in my work because uh, uh, we are talking about prevention rather than a disease diagnosis. So we hope we can prevent it before disease occur. Uh, but you have to have very good scientific evidence to show that instead of just uh, you know, a wide guess. Uh, so the insurance company, and I hope for depression especially, I hope it can be introduced in education sector because there's so many students who may have problems and they, they are at the teenager types of uh, uh, state and they don't want to share their emotion with people and uh, they are, you know, try, to, try to be cool and things like that. So I hope some objective measurement can at least help them to understand them, themselves that they need help and, uh, and be able to reach out for help. So students, uh, insurance and elderly uh, in, the, uh, in a lot of nursing homes that people uh, may, do not, uh, they may need help and they do not know that they have uh, a, a problem in the emotional, in the, in the, you know, not necessarily maybe mental state, but the emotional uh, uh, function may be uh, uh, deteriorating because of aging or, or maybe because of disease, d dementia and other things. So I think uh, the younger age group, the adults and the elderly, uh, depends on how we can uh, be able to use it. The only thing that I, th I, I wish this can be, uh, can be applied is outside of the hospital, not in the hospital, not, uh, or not alone in the hospital alone, but we should put this uh, technology, since this, this is a, a non-invasive technology, uh, we can make it easier for people to access so that they can benefit from the uh, results of this assessment to understand themselves a little bit more and may be able to provide help to a more target group so that they can get uh, exactly what we want them to actually get for some uh, assistance in terms of the emotional support. Mm. It sounds very promising and meaningful. So thank you, Professor C, for joining us in the studio today. You can learn more about innovations by Hong Kong scientists by visiting SEMP.com.